appreciate everyone joining in, uh, joining in for this class. We are uh, engaged in the study of uh, logic and as it pertains to uh, biblical logic Bible. And last time we were, we got into the genus and species. I may just go back and show you what we uh, did last time. And just briefly, just to let you look at it, to kind of remind you. Before we uh, get started, though, let's have a short word of prayer. To bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this study of the uh, methods of ascertaining Bible authority. We pray that each of us would give a diligent, diligent attention to this study and apply these techniques to understanding what Thy will is for each one of us. We're grateful to be able to engage in this study, to be with uh, brethren alike, uh, precious of faith. And we pray that we continue to bless us in every right way and to bless our study of thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last time we uh, I just showed it to you briefly just to uh, show you what we did. If you remember, we talked about purposes and types of definitions. And then from that, we proceeded to genus and uh, genus and species. You may recall this uh, screen as well. And some may ask, well, why do we do uh, gen genus and species? Uh, it's a method of defining what you're talking about. If you can classify things as to what uh, what group they belong to, it goes a long way in defining what you're talking about. In this particular screen here, we we define food as a genus and meats, dairy products, fruits and vegetables and grains. That, that may not be all the foods, but, but certainly most of them. Uh, those are uh, species of food, but they're also genus of some other species. Uh, Certainly, we don't have species for all these categories, but for example, dairy products. <clears throat> Again, this uh, is not exhaustive, uh, but dairy products is butter, cheese, cream, milk. So those four things are species of dairy product. So that makes dairy product a, a genus, but it is a species of food, and food is a genus, and food can be a species of something higher up. But what, once you go through this categorization, you you kind of define or limit uh, what you're talking about, so there's no confusion about uh, what you're talking about. And we can break down uh, logic uh, the same way. <clears throat> uh, there's two forms of logic: this informal and formal. There are no other kinds of logic. Uh, they are uh, comprehensive, informal, and Formal, but under those there's uh, other uh, forms of logic, and we'll consider informal logic later. But under formal logic, there's induction and deduction. Uh, deduction, of course, is what we're primarily concerned with. Uh, induction more has to do with experimental sciences, and we'll uh, we may touch on that uh, briefly. But it's really deduction uh, that we want to uh, deal with. In, in deduction, <clears throat> there are other ways of looking at uh, deduction other than just those categories that we just uh, previously looked at. If you're talking about logic as, uh, as really uh, we are, just delving into the various aspects of it, how it's structured and so forth and the different aspects of it, you can view logic as a science but if you're using logic to persuade other people, there's a technique to that. And so uh, logic in that sense can be uh, defined as, as an art. But again, logic is a science, is a species of, of uh, the genus logic. And logic as an art is a, a species of the genus logic. And as I said uh, last week, don't confuse logical genus and species with the uh, taxonomic uh, 
classifications, which there's a lot more taxonomic classifications than just that, but it is not the same thing. Uh, it's entirely different. So genus, uh, just a definition from the dictionary, is a, it's a class of things that have common characteristic and that can be subdivided into subordinate things. And in logic, species is, is a group subordinate to the genus and containing individual uh, individuals agreeing in some common attribute and called by a common name and it's got to be associated with the uh, genus. Again, this is all part of being able to define uh, what you're talking about. <clears throat> but another uh, aspect of uh, genus and species or <clears throat> how people can confuse those things and uh, mislead you or try to mislead you. And for example, <clears throat> This has the same, um, it looks the same as the ones we just looked at previously, where people is a genus, and then you have women and lawyers as species. But the problem here is that you know, species have to be exclusive. They can't overlap with another species. But you can see here that uh, women and lawyers are not exclusive. You can have women lawyers or uh, women that are not lawyers. So these are not exclusives, and, and this is an incorrect uh, classification of species associated with people. If you have people, uh, women and, and men, of course, nowadays I understand that there are probably uh, more than two uh, genders, <laughs> but in conventional thinking, in the right thinking, they're just women and men. Those are the two species, and the only two species of people. Now, you could probably, uh, if you wanted to, go into ethnic groups or include that in there, but in terms of gender, there's only two genders. So this is an incorrect uh, classification of species under the people because species cannot overlap. And uh, another uh, incorrect of, of doing uh, uh, the, the classifying, uh, classifying genus and species is this one. Well, former logic is a species of logic, but induction is not a direct species of logic. It's a it's under former logic, induction and deduction. So the 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 uh, level or the tier is incorrect so this is an incorrect way of doing uh, genus and, and species another area that could uh, occur here if i can get my screen up is uh, this is kind of uh, if it's an ambiguous word well, we know what baseball is. We know it's a ball. We know basketball is a ball, football is a ball, soccer ball is a ball. But what is midwinter ball? Does anybody know what a midwinter ball is? So it's a, it's a uh, uh, ambiguous term. It may mean something to someone, but it's an ambiguous term. So we don't know if it should be here or somewhere else. It may be talking about a... Uh, some gala affair or whatever these balls are called, uh, where you know a bunch of people people gather and and uh, drink and crowds and stuff like that. That may be what a midwinter ball is. I don't know what a midwinter ball is, but you can't have uh, a ambiguous or a term that's unknown. Let me see if I can find another one here. Uh, no, I don't guess I have, but there's no one where uh, you find a, 
a species that is not part of the genus, but it's rather a, or a type or kind of that uh, genus. Like bicycle, uh, you can have a frame as a species and petals as a species. Those are parts of bicycles. They're not kinds of bicycles. You can have, you know, a kind with a, uh, a um, uh, what are these little bicycles that have uh, batteries on them? It can be that kind or something else. So that's an incorrect way of doing a, a genus and and uh, species. So you have to be careful about that. But if you can go through this process and at least at least uh, specify the uh, the species as far down as you need to go, you don't have to go on the ad infinitum, but as far as you need to go. But there's another way that uh, is uh, used in defining terms, and that's called extension and intention uh, intention is not the intent is e i n t e s i n intention so we'll look at uh, that if i may have to minimize this so i can see uh, intention and extension. Let me see if I can increase that a little bit. And it, you'll be able to see this, I think, uh, pretty clearly. Let's just take the, the, the term device. And if we go down, we're, you can think of uh, uh, something that's narrowing down is getting more intense as it goes down. And that's uh, intention. And you take something at the, the bottom and you you have a, a, a pyramid, an inverse pyramid going up, and you're extending the range of whatever it is you're, you're doing. So that's the basic concepts behind uh, extension and intention. So you got a device. You could have uh, below that, if you're kind of drilling down, you can have below that a timepiece. It's a it's a device, some sort of device. But there, what kind of timepiece are you talking about? There's different kind. There's there's a uh, sundial. There's a water clocks. There, uh, you know, any number of types of timepieces. But what kind of timepiece are you talking about? If you drill down further, you can say, well, we're talking about a clock. So, okay. Uh, what kind of clock? You know, a watch is a type of clock. Even your cell phone is a type of clock. But you could say a digital digital clock, grandfather clock, or grandmother clock, a uh, uh, one of these little desktop alarm type clocks. There's all sorts of clocks, but the further down you go, you're increasing the intention. And you can see from this that uh, extension and intention are inverse of one another. An increase in extension is a decrease in intention. And an increase in intention is a decrease in extension. So the more extended you get, the broader the category, the more abstract it is that you're talking about because it's you really you almost get where you're talking about the concepts and the more abstract a term is uh, the more extent it is the greater its extent so device is more abstract than uh, timepiece and digital clock is uh, more uh, concrete if you will than device the concreteness becomes greater with intention so you come up with another uh, category here if i can find my cursor 
let's look at extension and tension in, in these deals. You got the animal, ape, gorilla, living being, mammal. So in order of a, in increasing extension and decreasing intention, we can we can categorize them or sort them this way. Uh, gorilla, start with a gorilla. And above that is an ape. Above that is mammal. Above that is animal because they're different types of animals. And then above that is living living being. Because you can have uh, all sorts of non-animals that are living. But in order of uh, increasing intention and decreasing, let me let me expand it so you can see it a little better. In order of uh, increasing intention, let's let's sort it that way. And decreasing uh, uh, extension, you can start out with living being, animal, mammal, ape, and gorilla. It's just the inverse of the other one. So they're related in that way that that they're uh, inverse of one another. And the increasing extension, and when we increase the extension, we got to a more abstract uh, thing. Living being is more abstract than a gorilla. And when we went to the other direction, a gorilla is more concrete than a living being. So again, these are uh, methods of uh, categorizing and, and defining terms. And it's helpful, you, you, you're unlikely to go through this uh, process in any sort of debate or anything like that, but it's just helpful on your own to be able to go through this exercise to see what you're talking about and then see what the, uh, hopefully what the other uh, fellow is talking about also. And let's go into the methods of defining. And this whole exercise is in a, uh, uh, exercise to define terms. Well, the first um, a rule for uh, defining by uh, genus and uh, difference. Let's see if I've got this in order here. Give me just a moment. There are methods of defining a term. You know, we go through the exercise of genus and species, but uh, uh, and this is one that we use almost um, unconsciously. We just do this automatically. Sometimes we can define a term by uh, synonym. And you might just do this with uh, children, and, and, and the next one too, you might do it with children, but it's also good to uh, do it when you're, there's a term that's not readily ascertainable. For example, a progeny, you know, I'm sure we all here know what uh, progeny is, but it's a synonym of uh, descendants and children. And if you know what descendants or children or and you say progeny is a, a cinnamon name of that, then you pretty much know what uh, progeny means. So, but let's say uh, vicissitude. Uh, do we all know what the vicissitude is? Well, if you know what the uh, mutability is, then you know, that's a synonym for vicissitude. Of course, we have the benefit of computers and we have synonym uh, or uh, uh, definitions and synonyms and antonyms too uh, as part of that dictionary so we can get those uh, fairly readily and, and maybe get a term that we know and let's just say uh, an example given here is uh, like a child says uh, daddy what does essential mean and he says well essential means it's necessary or important if that's terms that the child knows and, and then they know what essential means. So we can do that uh, by uh, uh, definition. 
Now, uh, one limitation of this, of course, is that there are uh, many words that do not have exact uh, synonyms. And of course, I guess one could argue that the reason you have different words, even though they are, they're similar, they're synonyms, they're not exactly the same. They have nuances of definition. But nevertheless, there are some uh, terms that do not have uh, synonyms. For example, what's a synonym for oxygen? It's not air, even though it's not gas. There's no direct synonym for oxygen, even though oxygen may be a species of uh, gas or gaseous substance, maybe a species of that. It's not an exact uh, synonym. And there are other uh, terms that don't have uh, an exact uh, synonym like uh, bone, uh, breakfast, or triangle. By definition, triangle is a unique deal. Uh, you could say it's a geometric figure, but that doesn't get you any closer to what a triangle is than uh, some other deal. But anyway, Another way of defining is by example, and of course we use this quite often with uh, children. And eventually the children will, uh, I guess they come by naturally just because of the way it's used, but they may want to know what money is. Well, you give them uh, some money and take them into a candy store and they'll, they'll pretty soon know what uh, money is used for. They'll get an idea what uh, money and uh, what about cow well he can be driving by a pasture and, and say well what's a cow say well look out there you see those animals out there that those are cows so that's uh, by uh, examples and we use this uh, quite often and uh, again it, it has some uh, limitations so if a child wants to know what, what a typewriter is, and all you have is a computer with a keyboard, and it's a it's a kind of a typewriter, but for the, uh, those of us that uh, go way, way back, uh, a computer is a word processor. It's not a typewriter. You have to go to, uh, back to the old Smith Coronas or Olivetti's. Uh, know what a, a mechanical typewriter is. So sometimes there's limitations as to uh, using examples to, to provide what the uh, definition is. Now, probably the best way of doing it is defining a term by a genus and a difference. And of course, genus includes a species, but providing the genus and the difference between uh, genuses. Uh, so if you can uh, talk about a uh, device and a food, those are two genuses. But when you can, uh, you're trying to define a term, you can show the difference that genus, that uh, food and a uh, device are two different things and not the same thing. And you can give uh, some of the species under those genuses. And, and at least by that method, the person that you're trying to explain this to will, will know uh, the, what these terms are. And, and, and really, uh, when you do that, when you give those examples, uh, you, you're not really uh, given a a uh, let's call a definition of those words. You're you're talking about the concepts behind the words, like when you're talking about food and you give uh, some of the species of foods, and you give a device and you give something like timepiece and clock and and digital and stuff like that. Then when you keep going down, you know you can you're you're uh, given the attributes and you're defining by the attributes or uh, of the concepts behind those words and by that one comes to know 
uh, the definition of those. You know, they'll have it clear in their, in their mind, and, they, and we do this. They have it clear in their mind that these are different things. And then again, if you talk about uh, timepiece, they have a picture in their mind of what that is, and it's not food. So it it uh, uh, helps to define things. Now, <clears throat> when you're trying to uh, uh, set a, set the difference apart from these uh, area of species under the genus, the uh, you want to exclude uh, species uh, that the term does not include, and but you want to include species that the term does include. And if you were to say, well, uh, uh, what's a battle? What's a battle? You can say, well, that's a uh, hostile encounter between two armies. Well, uh, then are you talking about uh, uh, you're excluding battles between uh, ships at sea? Are planes in the air? In the air, those are hostile encounters too. So this may be too uh, narrow uh, a definition of what a hostile encounter is. So the difference should be an essential difference. And uh, you know, a painting is not a a picture drawn on a canvas, but it's a paint a picture drawn by means of paint because you could have a painting that uh, you, you use a number two pencil but that's not a painting that's a drawing so you have to be careful about that and uh, for some things uh, the difference uh, need not come after the genus triangle is a genus, but the very definition of a triangle is that it's a three-sided, so it doesn't have any species under it. It's just a three-sided uh, geometric figure, so a triangle would fall under geometric figure, part of that genus, but there's no species under triangle. So again, these, these are methods for uh, defining terms and it's a useful uh, exercise to go through. Well, what are the rules for defining by genus and, and difference? Well, one thing is a uh, definition should uh, state the essential attributes of the term. And essential means necessary that uh, if you didn't include that attribute uh, the term would cease to be what it was meant to be so uh, give an example the essential attribute of a oven is a, well one thing is ability to heat but uh, uh, having a cavity sufficient to place uh, dishes of food in it in order to heat them up. If it was just a place to put a dish of food, unprepared food in, but it had no heat, it's not an oven. <laughs> it's something else, but it's not an oven. Now, the fact that it is uh, uh, a box, if you will, is just a really incidental to the fact that it, heat, it heats up it's a device for heating up uh, food. But you could have a round oven. You could have these uh, pizza ovens that, you know, it, it, it's just an enclosure and you'd have to push the uh, pizza back into it. It's, it's still an oven. So you, those other aspects of an oven, oven are just uh, uh, incidental to the term. And if you were to change those incidentals, it's still an oven. But if you uh, eliminate the ability to heat food, 
That is essential. If we change that, it is no longer an oven. Another uh, uh, thing about this rule is that it, you should avoid uh, redundancy. State the essential attributes, but don't be redundant in doing so. Again, let's, let's talk, think about the uh, triangle. You could say that a triangle is a polygon with uh, three sides and three angles. Well, it's uh, redundant in a number of aspects. Well, one thing, all polygons have straight sides. That's definitionally all polygons have straight sides. It is not a circle. It is not an arc. It has straight sides. And any polygon with three sides has got to have, by definition, has got to have three angles. Uh, so you don't have to specify the, uh, that definition. It, it's, uh, uh, it's just definition. That's what it is. A better definition for a uh, triangle is just simply a polygon with uh, three sides. Then you don't have to go into all that uh, other stuff. And a definition should not be circular. Again, let me expand this out so you can see what I'm talking about. A definition should not be circular. Uh, the word uh, being defined should not be part of the definition. Uh, if a, stu a student defines logic as the study of logic, it really hasn't given the meaning at all. So uh, definition goes nowhere when you use the same, use the term to define the term. Now, the, the definition of a polar bear is a white bear which inhabits Arctic regions is not circular, even though the word bear appears in both parts because uh, you could say a polar bear is a bear that is white and inhabits Arctic regions. So it, just for convenience sake, we just say a white bear. Number three, a definition should not be too broad nor too narrow. Uh, this uh, definition is, uh, our rule is violating when a definition includes what it should exclude or excludes what it should include. And if you want an uh, uh, example of this, let's think about the word table. You could say that a table is a piece of furniture consisting of a flat slab of wood fixed on legs. Of course, you can see the uh, problem with this because uh, you know, this definition excludes tables made of wood, stone, uh, plastic, or so it, it's a uh, extension is too small. The definition of a table which includes too much, like a piece of furniture with legs, well, that includes uh, uh, chairs. Uh, for those of you that uh, live in yesteryear, you could use uh, pieces of uh, equipment that's used to wash clothes with at four legs and in a tub. Uh, include couches, couches, couches could have uh, legs, and it can include other things which, which are not tables, so it's too broad. So you need to look at the extension of the term and see if that and its uh, definition are equivalent. Look for Counterexamples is a is a baby a newborn person? Uh, what about a six month old baby? Do you still consider that a newborn? Is uh, logic the science of thinking, or are there types of thinking outside the uh, uh, scope of logic? So 
just need to think about those things and when you're uh, defining something uh, consider these things that way you don't get into a confu confusion of what you're trying to do to uh, define a definition should not be unclear or figurative definitions can be uh, unclear of course for uh, a number of reasons uh, it may use words which are ambiguous, vague, or obscure. If you define ray as a light beam, your definition is ambiguous. Uh, light has seven uh, several meanings, and so does uh, a beam, a ray beam, or a beam of light. Uh, or a beam of light might be a helpful and if you want to get really in the scientific uh, definition of what light is you can even go there it's defining man as a radio sensitive uh, hominid and of course radio sensitive just means able to reason a radio sensitive hominid uh, it breaks this rule because radio sensitive and hominid are too obscure for most people you know Radio native and hominid are not words that we use every day, so it may be uh, obscure to a lot of whole host of folks. And uh, definitions can be unclear when the uh, language of the definition is figurative or metaphorical. You can say ray is a drop of golden sun. That's a figurative definition, so it may be uh, uh, poetic, but it may not give you the exact definition of what you're trying to talk about. A definition should be stated positively if possible. Sometimes uh, when we're trying to define something, we say what it is not, and whether it may be useful sometimes, but it's better to say what it is. So by a process of uh, elimination, uh, sometimes we uh, break this rule. Uh, the term magazine should not be defined as a periodical, which is not a newspaper. And to define an isosceles triangle as a triangle with uh, which is neither equilateral or scalene. Uh, it breaks this rule, even though the term and its definition have exactly the same extension. So we may be careful about that. Some terms necessarily negative, uh, such as bald, well, bald, you don't have hair, empty. You don't have anything in it. And penniless, you don't have money. So that's uh, sometimes it's useful to do that. A definition should be part of the same uh, the same part of speech as the term. If the term being defined is a noun, then the definition should be a noun. Uh, similarly, for the other main parts of speech, verbs, adjectives, and so on, you should use the same thing to define it. And of course, this rule, like a lot of rules, is broken uh, when to run is defined as faster than walking. Term is a verb and the definition is not. So sometimes you, you do violate it uh, purposely. Defining so as a needle pulling a thread breaks this rule as well. So sometimes you, you have to, do, to uh, uh, defy the rule. And you could, of course, uh, say that running is to go faster than walking. So is uh, to run a time where well, yeah, you get into these sort of problems, but if you think about them, then you can you, know, you can work around them. That, that uh, gets us past uh, quitting time here, so we'll stop here and we'll continue uh, this terms and definitions, terms, uh, and we'll get into statements, which are, are terms, and we'll uh, cover all sorts of statements next time. So thank you for your attention.